Welcome to episode 187 of In Touch with iOS, the podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg. Co host, Warren Sklar, is here. How are you doing, Warren? Good. Slow, slow news day. Should be a short show. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty slow today, but uh, think of thick enough stuff. But that other person you heard is our returning guest, Mr. Holden DePardo. How are you doing, Holden? Great. Glad, thanks for being here. Doing, doing well. Thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate you being here. But uh, as uh, as Warren mentioned, yeah, there's uh, lots of news that happened this week at Apple for, for once. Because sometimes we have slower weeks than uh, than uh, other weeks. But uh, at earnings call, you have uh, a new beta just got released. Uh, you got. Uh, Oh, just all kinds of stuff. Let's just go ahead and jump into it here. Let's uh, let's uh, jump right into the the news of the day. The first story here is actually the um, the uh, the quarterly results from uh, Apple. Uh, I've got a couple articles here. We won't go too deep into this, but just wanted to touch upon this a little bit. Apple's results, biggest ever, one hundred and twenty three point nine billion dollars, um, all time record revenue uh, for the company, thirty four point six billion in profit, and they, they're making all that money from us spending it since. I just got a new MacBook Pro M1 Pro, 16 inch, and uh, I think uh, Holden, you got one just recently at uh, 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 MacBook Pro as well. So we're spending lots of yeah. money. <laughs> so I, I, I spend very little on Apple. I never buy Apple. No, no, I don't. <laughs> sure. um, so we got uh, got reference to six colors, which is uh, Jason Snell and company site, which always does a great job of uh, giving us some breakdowns to the uh, the graphics that Apple's don't get that the the pie charts that Apple never gives us. So. Uh, Quarterly revenue by category, 58%. No surprise if I, that's iPhone. Uh, and then services is going just absolutely gangbusters, 16%. Mm-hmm. Um, Mac is up to 9%, which is probably that I can't I even think of it being at the, as high as that's been um, in probably the history of Mac. Um, iPad's got a 6% of the, of the revenue by category. And then the wearables watch is 12%. So uh, really cool. Really cool. And uh and, and we talked about the profit and and the year over year revenue change was good. Uh, but let's get into stuff that we talk about. So look at iPad. iPad uh, for quarter through four of uh, last year was eight point three uh, billion, and then uh, they did oh, just a mere seven point two billion in iPad sales. So I think it did okay considering it, it dropped, but you know the market's going to react because of that. So so that it was a minus fourteen uh, percent year over year. So. Uh, iPhone revenue continues to go crazy. Seventy-one point six billion dollars in in revenue for iPhone, and that was only a nine percent change over the year, pre, uh, the quarter previous. So, uh, so I think iPhone's doing pretty well too. Um, the services revenue, another one's gone up. Uh, went from uh, eighteen point three to nineteen point five billion. Uh, it was a, a little smidge drop there, twenty four percent. And then the uh, the wearables has just gone. That's gone gangbusters. That's uh, fourteen point seven billion. Of, uh, of course, the Apple Watch. Um, so it overall numbers look good. Uh, Holden, what do you think? I think this is a uh, this is this is a pretty amazing uh, amazing quarter for Apple. Um, let's hope the stock goes back up because the the stock market has been on a, on a tailspin just overall lately. But uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously the numbers are fantastic. It's, it's surprising to me that. The 13 did better than the 12, it seems. Usually when the design changes, that's like the year that everyone jumps on it. But 13 has been fantastic. So I'm I'm happy to see it's doing so well. Um, And then iPad's surprising, going down a little bit. Because the M1's a big change. But I guess the iPads have been so rock solid for years now that why upgrade as consistently? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not everybody wanted to, especially if you had a 2020 model, the the A15 processor, and I had a 2018 I traded in, so... Um, yeah, uh, not 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 everybody is jumping on that. Uh, what, what do you think, Warren? I think uh, our 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 favorite fruit company did well this uh, this past quarter. Yeah, they always do. I mean, the only issue would have been the uh, supply chain, right? Yeah, um, and I, which didn't seem like it affected much. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you wonder how much of it is talk when I you know when when they talk about it. Uh, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, in some ways. And it's not just Apple, but in some ways, creating the idea of limited qual- quantities of stuff makes people buy more stuff. And that's how it is. And that's how it Apple's very big on that stuff, too, because when they release new right. products, they, they even before this whole pandemic, it's it's been the same thing, too, where if you don't order 
your 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 polishing cloth in the first week it's it's sold out <laughs> and, and there was no supply chain issue with the polishing cloth they could have made more of those so yeah, I mean, no semiconductors there yeah really like it was yeah yeah we all, i got mine up there and i followed the directions on how to clean it i do that every time <laughs> yeah it was crazy um <laughs> but yeah so i mean you know I guess it depends on uh, how much you believe is really affecting it. And I know it is, but Apple has a lot of pull in the market. So, yeah. Oh, they do. And well, I'm just, just happy to see, happy to see things go, continue to, to just go crazy with the product sales and we'll just keep going. That's all we can do. And like I said, I didn't, yeah. we're doomed. Not, we're, 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 the That's Apple okay. is doomed and uh and you know, we don't yeah. do, do too many over over analyzing of the financials <laughs> here, but I think uh, just just looking at the numbers, it's all, it's all that's all there's to it. Uh, to, uh, yeah, there's nothing to worry about. Let the analysts go through and go deeper into it, but uh, we just wanted to just yeah. touch on that because that just actually just got announced today as we record this, so it was just, it was very fresh news. So so we'll be hearing more stuff, think, I'm sure. <laughs> do you think hold uh, and hold it is younger? But do you think in our lifetime we would ever see Apple fold in yeah. our lifetime? No. I mean, yeah, we go back to, I mean, I'm sure Holden knows the history and stuff, and you know, going back right when oh, yeah. when Microsoft gave uh, Apple a loan and <laughs> or, or gave them money yeah. and, and, and and you know and all the other stuff that happened back in those old days. Uh, what, never they were like thought. ninety days from bankruptcy or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. When Steve came back, like they were really, it was almost going to happen. I mean, BlackBerry folded two weeks ago, and if you would have asked me yeah. in the late oh. two, early two thousands, I mean, things happen. Yeah, so talk about you that. Know, yeah. But they just folded. I knew they folded, but it's still amazing to me. To well, the company itself still exists, but, but yeah, the, the BlackBerry as we know it to, is gone. I think there was yeah. one black BES server somewhere in Ontario, Canada that they shut down, <laughs> and that was, that was the end of it. So it's kind of like that last block, block that last blockbuster. It's still open there. Just Pretty much, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oregon, the one, the one, one person who saw their BlackBerry uh, getting email, and they had to tell her yeah. to turn it off. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on. Um, this story, and we were just actually showing this on our camera pre-show here. Um, Apple launches a black Unity braided solo loop. Uh, goes along with the Unity Lights watch face. Apple uh, today announced a black Unity braided solo loop for the Apple Watch, as well as a new do- downloadable watch face to celebrate uh, Black History Month. Uh, following the launch of the limited edition uh, uh, black Unity Apple Watch Series 6 sports band in 2021, uh, uh, Apple decided to uh, launch uh, this this uh, solo loop, which I absolutely love. The solo loop, I think it's probably the best bands they make, and very, mm-hmm. and pricey mm-hmm. too. But I enjoy it. Um, uh, absolutely big. I thought that I thought that until the uh, new leather strap. And no, <laughs> when you I'm change really your, your, your you change your <laughs> watch no, band every been with me. every five minutes. But <laughs> this one's been a keeper for about at least two months. So that's, well, that's a record for you. Yeah. Uh, but it so was to celebrate Black History Month. I think this is great stuff that they did, and I I really like the how um, I actually got. I'm sure you guys did too. Was uh, just an actual notification. Hey, there's a new watch band, and not watch face came out today, and the, the, the Black Unity and um, and uh, holding. Uh, did you? I, I guess you did change the, the 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 watch face. Are you using it now? Um, I changed it and then I changed it right back. Okay. I need all the complications. I need to set it up. I just kind of was setting it up um, right think? before we recorded here. But it's really nice looking. I think it's actually one of the nicer um, looking kind of, um, I guess you call them event watch faces or a kind of special cause uh, watch faces. Um, it's definitely one of the nicer ones for sure. Yeah. The late aesthetic is, is pretty good looking. And Warren, you're st- you have been using it since it came out and you're like in it or? Yeah. Um, I, I actually read a, a Mac Rumors article about it um, right before I got the notification. So I'm like, oh, I want that. I wonder how, oh. Okay, that's it. Just gave that notification uh, right afterwards. So it, <laughs> it came up right out. So I'm like, um, yeah, so I got it, dug into it a little bit. And uh, yeah, you could go in and add the complications and you could add, uh, you could add the, um, the uh, not the numbers, but the, the, the locations of the numbers uh, uh, for, for the lines on it. And um, yeah, it's, it's really nice um, in the complications going up on it. I, you know, it looks a little bit like a watermelon to me with the dots on it. If you get the dots on it, you'll see what I mean because they look like pits. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, if somebody told me this was a, you know, a BLM thing, I would not know. Um, not that it's good or bad. It's just... Yeah you know same with the band right um <laughs> but it's uh yeah it's definitely uh nice and hopefully uh some of the profits or on the band I, I didn't read the story but i don't know if the profits on the band go to uh 
I need the uh, causes for that. That's a good question. I don't know about that. I know that the product red stuff goes towards. Yeah. Um, I didn't see anything mentioned uh, towards AIDS in, uh, in Africa, yeah. but yeah, I, I don't know about that. I'd be surprised if it didn't, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So the so the. Uh, the Black Unity Braided Loop is available to order today on Apple's website at $99. Uh, it's available in select retail store locations. It'll be February 1st. That's uh, about next week uh, uh, as we record this. Uh, and if, as we said, the watch face is available to all Apple Watch users. You have to have a Series 4 or newer for that to be uh, available to you. Um, and uh, they also are making uh, a, a range of Afrofuturism-inspired wallpapers for the iPhone and the iPad, as well as the Mac uh, on its website, so you can go take a look at those as well. Um, so cool stuff, and uh, glad to see Apple doing this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, found this interesting. Uh, why is Apple offering an iPhone 8 refurbished when you can easily buy an <laughs> iPhone SE second gen? And it's basically the same, fu- same in my phone, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it was the first time in a while that. Uh, that Apple has decided to, this is a Mac rumors. Um, oh, wrong. I, and I put, and I brought, brought up the wrong article here, uh, that, uh, they restocked a refurbished iPhone and it's at the lowest price it's ever sold an iPhone for that. It's actually sold by Apple. Uh, it's a refurbished iPhone eight. It's $359 and it's through the online store in the United States. Um, for the time being, it's the cheapest iPhone that can be purchased directly through Apple, but the device is nearly a four and a half years old, and we strongly cons- recommend, I will say, I would strongly recommend considering the second gen SE, like I mentioned, which was released in April 2020. Uh, and that's available with 64 gigs of storage or for $399 or $128 for $449. Even better, the chip is even faster on the SE, so there's so many downsides to the eight, but of course who knows how long, much longer Apple's going to support the iPhone eight. So why would you want to spend all that kind of money on a phone now <laughs> when it potentially could possibly be the next phone in the line? I would anticipate probably the next one that's going to not be on iOS 16 would probably be the iPhone seven at this point. So the eight might be a lot, we've probably got at least another mm-hmm. year left uh, on that. So uh, they had a surplus. I'm sure. It's yeah, it has to be. Well, what do you think Warren? Yeah, no, I, Warren, did you say me or him? Warren, Warren. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I agree. You, you would get the SE too, but um, I'm sure they just have some extras uh, and, and they're selling them off while they can. Um, not a terrible phone, though. I mean, you know. No. But yeah. I have the 8 yeah, Plus. Support. The SE uh, 2 is a home button too. Yeah, it's all home button. It's, yeah. it's almost identical, I think. Yeah. Um, no, they basically are. It's up to chip. Point. Yeah, I think the A plus would be bigger than the SE two. So we're right. Oh, it's yeah. still available. So if that's still available, this is just the eight. If you want, yeah, just the eight. It's just the eight. Okay. Yeah. 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 They they just they, they they have more than they know what to do with. So they're, yeah, they're selling off. And so. any other thoughts on that, Holm? No, I mean I totally agree with you guys. Um, I, I'm not sure how long they'll be around for, but presumably if that next generation SE is coming out soon, that'd be an even funnier uh, kind of comparison between if the rumored features are true and it has an a 15 and 5g built into it, or, you know, four and a half year old iPhone eight, like that just would be, why would you do that? It makes absolutely no sense. So yeah, I agree with Warren. They're probably just trying to get rid of these things. Yeah. Great. So, Hey, let's go ahead and move on. Mac rumors here. Apple fixed iCloud bug causing syncing issues for third party apps. Apple has appeared to have fixed an ongoing iCloud server issue that was causing some apps that have implemented iCloud support to fail to, to fail to sync properly. Uh, the bug uh, had, has persisted since November of, of 2021, and app developers were becoming increasingly upset with Apple's lack of effort to address the issue. Uh, and they go through a lot of stuff and, and worried about stuff with iCloud with seeing 503 error messages and request failures and all this fun stuff. But, uh, iCloud syncing has, uh, it seems like that they've, they've, they've gone through and they've, they actually have fixed the problem finally. And, uh, you know, I, I was, I didn't really th- knew this was such a problem is other than we just do normal behaviors we, we expect with iCloud. Uh, well, what do you think of Holden? Um, yeah, I actually had a problem with uh, a writing app that I use where it wouldn't sync everything across the board. I don't know if it was related to this or not. So hopefully that gets uh, alleviated there. But this is definitely an important one because iCloud is very much a part of Apple's. It just works. Mm-hmm. You go to any of your devices, it just works. It's there. So right. it, it should have been a huge priority for them. You think? Any thoughts, Warren? Yeah. 
Yeah, like you, I didn't even know there was an issue. Uh, I know uh, Kelly had somebody on our show not too long ago, a developer right. yesterday day before, talking about it, and that's the first I heard about too. So, um, it. <laughs> But by the time uh, non-developers uh, found out about it, they had fixed it. Uh, yeah. As far as I know, yeah. it was kind of the same day. I, you know, within the day, it was fixed. Oh, good. Yeah. good, good. They got to, they got fixing it. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, go on to uh, topics. Uh, first off, we'll start off with iOS fifteen point three. The release candidate came out last week, uh, and uh, it it dropped uh, yesterday as we record this uh, to to everybody. And it did fix a big Safari bug, and uh, there was a, 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 a quite a quite a bug with, that we talked about last week uh, that uh, leaking your browser history. And this is also was also a problem with 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 Mac as well. So uh, I, I was surprised that Apple has left, left this this open for so long uh, that uh, it. Uh, uh, it was uh, just just crazy stuff here. So, and there was a quite a, quite a laundry list of, of security updates uh, that uh, that were released here. Uh, Holden, there, what did you think of this? I mean, this this uh, browser bug was was this? It was it was pretty nasty, and, and I'm surprised it was open as long as it was. Yeah, I hadn't really known too much about it. Um, fortunately, it didn't impact me. Um, <laughs> so yeah. I don't think it did. Um, but yeah, like, that's a really big thing, especially with security and privacy browsing history is super super personal like yeah. this is not the kind of thing you want just getting out there um so yeah that's a big deal um that's yeah it's really good that you had got that taken care of um yeah thank god i didn't see anything happen on my end yeah and uh we talked about this last week warren what i, I mean i i didn't notice anything really i mean what i mm-hmm. mean is it going to be leaked i mean it, it is what it is right don't you think how would we know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, again, I, I haven't heard of it uh, being leaked in the wild. Like most of these stories, uh, researchers found, uh, the hackers found, but you know, it's not like uh, Mary from next door found. Yeah, and it's never like that. So you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So there was uh, there was ten things that that really the Apple had identified that were fixed. Uh, so the first one here was a color sync issue with uh, uh, all the devices as well as the iPhone and the iPad. Um, the, the impact was processing a maliciously crafted file that may lead to arbitrary code execution. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, a memory corruption issue was addressed with improved validation. So it uh, there was a security fix there. Uh, and Crash Reporter had some problems. iCloud uh, there's had an application that may be able to access a user's files. Mm, that's a That's a quite a big one there. Uh, and a couple others out, which I won't bother to get into WebKit, WebKit storage, all that stuff. All I got to say is update it now, please <laughs> don't, don't stay on the previous version. 15.2.1 go right to 15.3 and just update it, please. <laughs> you want, you want to be, you want to be secure. For Dave. <laughs> don't you think guys? <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I fully support that. Yes. Um, another no, couple no upgrading. Upgrading is terrible for your phone. Yeah. <laughs> a couple other things that was added to uh, fifteen point three uh, uh, for TVOS uh, and HomePod uh, fifteen point three enabled multi user voice recognition in more countries. Uh, so that's good. So other countries will have a good voice recognition uh, on those devices. Uh, uh, so. Uh, HomePod, as, as everybody knows, you go into the HomeKit uh, app and the Home app and then go in and, and eventually it does update itself, but you can force it by going into the HomePod and go into the settings and it will start updating. Uh, and then the other thing that uh, was interesting uh, that it did fix is uh, this was an I, it's also I, uh, Mac Rumors uh, article linked here is uh, fixing an issue with HomeKit camera thumbnails failing to refresh. Um, uh, Again, we talked about security fixes. Uh, this also had learned that the software update also resolved an issue with HomeKit camera thumbnails that they wouldn't refresh for some users in the Home app. I didn't notice this. This is the HomeKit security video cameras. You know, they have that thumbnails with that, and uh, people were alerted to that. So I didn't. Uh, I don't use this, so I don't know if you guys do. No, I don't. So, but at least I fixed it. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it with iOS fifteen point three. Go ahead and, uh, like I said, go go get it. Go 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 and uh, get get yourself uh, safe with uh, with this stuff. So, 
So let's talk about 15.4 beta one. It came out the next day, which was, which made Warren very happy because he was not even a, 24 hours without a new, without a beta uh, this time. I was itching. Um, I, I, I developed a rash. So I think, the, I think the biggest thing that stood out with about this and everybody's been uh, just so uh, wanting it so badly was the universal control for Mac and iPad. Um, I, uh, installed this, uh, I put it on my, my, uh, first gen iPad pro and uh, I have a Mac mini that runs a uh, monitor, a second Mac mini that runs uh, Monterey beta of uh, 12.3. And already I have a bug that says unable to connect to iPad, a miscellaneous error has occurred dash 10, 10. So it's beta. <laughs> so, but Warren, what uh, you said, you had some experience and you said that you spent all of about what, 10 minutes on it. And uh, did, did it work for you? Yeah, it did. Um, so I, um, as you know, I sold my uh, iPad Pro 12.9 inch mm-hmm. shortly after I bought it because Universal Control was so delayed. I I didn't think I was going to use it. I got an iPad Mini 6 with it instead. So that's what I have now. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, um, like the article says, the um, the the settings are on by default. Um, if you go into display settings on the on the Mac on the beta, it will list a couple of options for it. Right. Um, and basically, it says just kind of put your uh, iPad near it, and I did. And the first thing that didn't work was it the, uh, the arrangement was off. So the the iPad thought it was on the right, but it was on the left, mm-hmm. which is something they stressed in the um, in a in a keynote, saying that it will know it literally knows where it is in relationship to the Mac. But um, that was fixable in the um, display, uh, the main display properties. Just it looks like another monitor. You can drag it around. Um, other than that, I started playing with it a little bit. You move the mouse over to the iPad, and, and you get almost like the um, you get kind of the same mouse pointer as you would get on a, with the trackpad on an iPad. It's kind of a little circle blob thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you move it. You can open up things. Um, I had um, a, my trackpad on there, so if you, you know, it's, it's going to take some getting used to it. So if you go into your iPad and making sure you're on the iPad and take two fingers on trackpad down, you'll get the uh, spotlight search on the iPad. And then I tried to, you know, type in a search right after I did that. And I started doing the search on the Mac and I had to kind of put my mouse pointer in the uh, text field on the iPad. So, I mean, it's, it's not perfect yet, but I see what they're trying to do. And uh, that's basically, I didn't try to move anything between the two. I just kind of opened up some apps and uh, and did a couple searches on it, and you know it was it was fine. Um, you know it's good for people who want to do something on their iPad that they can't do on their Mac because again, mm-hmm. Sidecar was always there, and Sidecar is also another just display. So right. me personally, I can't think of that much I would do. Um, but for people who need to transfer stuff between the two more a lot, then then maybe. Yeah, well, it's gonna be interesting to see where it goes. Um, it's still a very fresh beta as of today, so as we record. So uh, let's see how the, how the beta goes. I would say, huh? Do you any any thoughts on this, uh, Holden? Uh, I'm excited for the feature. I I don't do the betas except for mm-hmm. the the point oh betas during the summer. Uh, but I'm very excited to get in this feature. I do think it's funny that in the screenshots they show uh, beta next to the feature in settings. Yeah. So it's like beta within beta. Like it's like this is really in development, guys. Like right. Right. it might not work that well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited for it to come out. That's, that's going to be a, for me. I think it's going to be nice to have. Yeah. A couple other things they've added. I don't know if you've tried this yet, uh, Warren. Is uh, Face ID with a mask because you know, we were using the Apple Watch to unlock. Now it can <laughs> unlock with your mask. I did not. As soon as I put the bit on, it, it it said it, and then it says um, you could do it, if, and it, um, you could set it up. So it says you do not need your mask to set it up. So you do it, and as soon as you do it, it has to do a face scan again. With your eyes. Right? Uh, I did not have. Uh, uh, I did not have a, my mask with me, so I didn't do it with the mask. Mm. Uh, I have not tried it. Um, I'm curious. I'm going to try it tonight with the uh, CPAP. See what happens. Okay. Uh, the because uh, it says Face ID with a mask is enabled after updating, 
And it's designed to yeah. use the area around your eyes for authentication purposes instead. If it also works if, with if classes, it, but it's not compatible with sunglasses. Hmm. That's yeah. interesting. If it works for the CPAP machine, I'm, I'm sold. Because yeah. uh, the the neither the watch did not that I wear my watch to bed anyways, but uh, and some people tried to do um, you know a face scan with that thing on and that didn't work either. So yeah. um, I'll let you know. I'll see how that goes. Um, you know, it's a little late, I guess. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you know, I'm hoping it's late. <laughs> um, you know, because the uh, you know the first time around when I did it with the Apple Watch unlock with the mask. Um, you know, I, you know, I do the betas and I put the beta on, I was working in a place where I had to wear a mask all the time right. and it was the best beta I've ever done. I mean, the, I've had like, what was it? Eight months or something be- between when the beta came out for that. Right. Mm-hmm. And it actually got released. It yeah. was about like eight months of like greatness. I mean, it, and I felt bad for people not doing it. And pe- if you remember, people started to do that. Um, so this might be the same thing too, where people might be pushed to do the beta if they don't have an Apple watch, if you're still wearing a mask, yeah. which it could be good or bad. And, you know, um, I worry that it's going to take Apple another eight months to push it out to the public again. Yeah, it might. Um, uh, and, uh, emojis, of course, so you, you gotta have new emojis. They, uh, they've got, uh, yeah. Uh, 14, uh, adding 37 emojis and 75 skin tone additions, total of 112 new characters, including things like a melting face, a saluting face. <laughs> I could go on and on, but how could we not go without uh, having emojis? You know, it's got to have some crazy ones. Um, <laughs> uh, turning off notifications for personal automations and shortcuts. Uh, the personal allocations that are set up in the shortcuts apps. There's a new notify when run option that lets you toggle notifications for shortcuts that are activated on or off this option. You can choose not to be notified when a shortcut activates uh, something that wasn't possible in earlier versions of uh, iOS 15. So this should be interesting. Uh, uh, you guys uh, you, uh, use any of those automations and shortcuts. I am so excited about that feature. Okay. So excited. So I have tons of shortcuts set up that are fully automated that like change my wallpaper at certain points of the day, the screen change my watch face, you know, as I'm working or then like at night, I want a different watch face or a different wallpaper to highlight different apps and different things about my watch that I'll need in that moment. And it works great, except I have all these dumb notifications saying, you know, um, wake up, you know, shortcut is turned on work shortcut is turned on. And it's just, it's aggravating. Um, so that's, that's very nice to, to I don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, good. Uh, and then um, the Apple Card widget. There's a new Apple Card widget that's in the Today View, which can be added to the home screen. It shows the current balance and your daily spending in different categories. So just really good stick in your eye when you charge too much on your Apple Card and you can see it right in the widget. Um, keyboard brightness. On, on iPad OS 15.4, there's a new key, uh, keyboard brightness option that can be at a control uh, center to allow you to adjust brightness of a connected keyboard that has backlighting. I don't know if the Magic Keyboard does that have that or not. I think it does. Um, and, uh, yeah, it does. Um, I, if, 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 I, if I were to read it a little further. Uh, Some real-time follow-up real fast is yeah. the um, Face ID uh, with the mask. Uh, um, so my 9to5 uh, said it works when uh, using Apple Pay and within the apps. So that's huge. Oh, yeah, that's huge. Too. That is huge. Yeah. Uh, thanks for following up on that. Um yeah. So, uh, so that's the keyboard brightness, uh, iCloud keychain notes. I can, iCloud keychain users can now add notes to any password entry, bringing iCloud keychain more in line with other password storing options like one password. That's cool. Um, of course, though, we know that there was a hundred and ter- 120 Hertz, uh, uh, display on the iPhone 13 pro, uh, they're now adding, uh, allowing for animations and third party apps, uh, to, 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 to be added for that, which is cool. Um, and, uh, we, of course, they came out with iCloud Plus with the uh, custom email domains. Uh, the beta is it can expand support for custom email domains that feature as part of, like I, said, like I said, paid iCloud Plus plans. Adding an option to set up a custom domain within iCloud Mail directly on the iPhone. That's awesome. Because <laughs> that was such a pain. <laughs> you had to go through those steps to get that to work. Um, uh, so check that out. Uh 
then share play in apps that support support share play. There's now an option to activate it directly from the shared share sheet. That's awesome. Um, this showing an example of doing that right from TikTok, which <laughs> you could uh, does what we're gonna do just do share play of TikTok, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, and they uh, they're also saying a a, a, a trade in cosmetic scan. Uh, there's code in iOS 15.4 suggests that Apple is working on a cosmetic scan feature that will use be used when trading in an iPhone. Cosmetic scan will actually be used to check the, the iPhone for damage and scratches and dings to provide a more accurate trade in value estimate. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> yeah. uh, the iPod Pad OS uh, Notes app. Um, in that section, they've added. Uh, a new corner gestures section under the quick notes. In this section, you can select functions for the left corner swipe and the right corner swipe. Uh, TV app customizations. You got pass key website uh, sign in. Uh, so we're going to be adding that. And, uh, you know, they're still working on the vaccination records and the health app uh, that that's now uh, adding a uh, digital COVID certificate format. Uh, so you know, for those in Europe. So, there's, there's going to be probably more we'll find as we go. That was a good, that was kind of a good read now what's in beta. So, uh, uh, what's in there. So Warren, we expect you to, uh, a full report next week of, the, of what, what, what you find. <laughs> uh, I expect to find things that won't work. Um, this, this is a pretty big update. So this is pretty uh, big. I, I, I must, yeah. I must, I must, yeah. I must say. So, um, it's, uh, it is pretty big. So, uh, we'll, uh, definitely see, uh, 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 where it goes uh, and 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 how it goes here. So, um, next topic I want to talk about a little bit here uh, is the the per, the personal safety guide, which has been out for a bit. And, uh, Apple's had this personal safety guide available to uh, everybody for quite some time. But uh, what's obviously been happening in the news lately is the whole AirTag controversy, where people have been using AirTags to AirTag to uh, to to stalk people and uh, tra- track their cars and try to steal cars and. We've talked about that before with all that stuff, uh, and um, it, it you go to some of the, some of the articles that will talk about it. Uh, like we have this article that I don't I don't know a blog. Uh, you know, that's the first thing you're talking about. Oh, because of the air tag, that's the first thing you're is a headline grabber is the fact that this is air tag and oh yeah. By the way, they have this dedicated personal safety guide. Well, yeah, they've had this for a while. Uh, they did update it, and, and it's actually it's actually set up just like uh, any other user guide. Just like if you go to you, you bookmark a iPhone or an iPad or a Mac or uh, uh, any of those types of devices. So it, it it's it's continually evolving through what it has. Now it does have a PDF version of it, so you can go through and if you want to do- download a whole fifty four pages to go through it all. You know, we won't go through all that, but uh, I wanted to just kind of touch upon some of the um, uh, some of the things at glance here. Uh, what Apple talks about. Um, so uh, it, it just really makes you be aware of what safety is, is and what you need to do to be, to be safe when you're using your, your Apple device. Um, so they talk about reviewing and taking action, you know, learning, uh, learning about ways to review and change what you share and what you secure. And, and it goes through how to, how to, how to check that uh, and do this as a checklist and to reviewing and taking action. You know, managing your share state, share settings. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys all the time. If you must, if you you know, share like you do a find my, find my sharing or or find my friends sharing, and you forget. Oh yeah, I shared that a long time ago. Do I really want that person tracking me? <laughs> uh, so you really got to go in and check this stuff. Um, so so when you're going and manage when you're going and managing share share settings, it actually goes through here and gives you a whole list of some of the things that uh, uh, that that you can ch- uh, change and set. So like uh, another good example is uh, managing file sh- settings for AirDrop. You know, people t- tend to try to abuse that a lot. Uh, if you go in and, and it's either it's on the Mac or, or even on your iPhone or your iPad, uh, you have, uh, you go into the settings and go to, air, uh, go to AirDrop uh, under general, and you choose the option that works best for you. So you, you just have to, you have to just be aware of uh this stuff. Same thing with photos and videos and how, how those things are shared, uh, managing activity on your Apple watch. Uh, uh, and even done all of these things you, you just, we people take for granted. You aren't really watching to see what, uh, uh what the, what it is when it comes to managing this stuff. Um, hold it. Do you, is there a lot of this stuff that you go through uh, time to time to check, uh, as far as your managing of settings and the sharing? I keep things pretty locked on to begin with. So I've kind of just done it once and I don't really look back on it too often. 
Um, but when it comes to like air tags, I think one of the big things with air tags has been like mm-hmm. people attach to them to cars and right. because someone has an Android phone or something like that, they don't get the notification that there's an air tag nearby. And I feel like a big solution there is just making some of that cross platform. I think that would, it's something that kind of just needs to, to happen. Because I think on, on devices, you have a lot you can do. Mm-hmm. That's kind of right now, the, I think the one thing that's kind of too much out of your control is with the air tags. But that's also an issue with Tile and the other trackers as well. Yeah, we talked about this on our shows. Um, uh, tile doesn't have a a very good uh, place. So you could put a Tile device in and there's no way of tracking it because it, it, it just doesn't have the technology like the, like the air tag does or to be tracked and you can, and they, they do have apps now you can have an install on, on an Android uh, device that will, will know that if an, if an air tag has been introduced in. Oh, they do. Okay. Is it made think, by Apple? I don't think so. For the Android. It is. Okay. Is, is it, yeah. is it Apple's, if it's Apple's app. Okay. So then they did do that. Okay. That's good. That's good. It should be OS level, but for right now that's, that's good. So uh, what, what do you think Warren, as far as any, anything that you're managing of settings, do you, do you, have you going through a lot of that stuff and check it or, and do, do you work like, you know, what with us, you and I both working in it, have you promoted this with friends and family and relative uh, and, and all that stuff? No, I mean, my, you know, my, my wife and I are, are pretty good. You know, my son, you know, it, the, the kids are a whole different level. Anyways, you can't deal with them because you know, they, they he, He's on something Instagram. So I don't know. They're on something where they all know where everybody is all the time. So, um, you know, he'll show us. He's like, see all the faces. That's where everybody is. I'm like, well, this yeah. is not going to work for me either. So, um, you know, so, I mean, it, it goes as far as you, you need to go and to the people who you need to go to. Um, but yeah, it's a good resource. Um, I haven't looked at it yet, but I can imagine what it looks like. Well, actually I did look at some of it, but right. um, yeah, I mean, you and I are in IT, so it's holding. We kind of know how to lock down our stuff. We we know what we're doing, but for the for the normal people, it's it's uh it's good, and it's, it's especially good for people who are I hate to say, but tinfoil hatty, yeah. um, you know, because they <laughs> they you know they they think that everything is you know everything is watching them, and this is a good article to show them, and you know, nine to, you know, I'm sure there's a great percentage that they'll read it and say this is BS anyways, and I don't believe any of it, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. That is the big obstacle. It's like, oh, you're worried about this. Read this 54-page document. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I feel like very few people will do that. No, it's nice to have no. the resource, though. They're not going to read it, and they'll say, I don't believe it. I wouldn't believe anything. They said no. it anyways. Yeah, there's that problem, yeah. too. But- yeah, it's the people who think that Facebook is watching them because they, they see an ad because of, uh, you know, they talked about it was in the bathroom or something like that. And, yeah. you know, there it's not. I mean, there's a whole lot. There's things going on, but, the, you know, the, the camera's not on watching you. Mm-hmm. you know? Oh, don't don't get me started about people putting duct tape on on, on <coughs> webcams. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Didn't Mark Zuckerberg do that? Didn't he like put a duct tape over his camera and his microphone and yeah, his computer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was at one show and he put it on there. I yeah. think he had a Mac too, and he, and he he put something on there. Uh, but actually, Apple made it real easy with this guide. You don't have to go through all fifty-four pages. They have uh, at the very bottom here and all the checklists you need. Um, so we'll just kind of go through this real quick here. Uh, see who has access to your device or accounts. And then, you know, they've got seven top things that you should be checking. Uh, you know, check what, uh, check what, which devices are signed into your account by going to settings, uh, under your name and, uh, look to see if there's any devices you don't recognize and get rid of them. You shouldn't have, they shouldn't be in there. Uh, uh, this is a good one. You know, maybe someone got was a smarty pants and got into your face ID and put an additional appearance or a, or a touch ID <laughs> fingerprint in there. Uh, uh, or, uh, go in there, make sure that those are all legit face ID uh, uh, profiles. I mean, I know a lot of us do with our, our significant others. Uh, probably had to do that uh, so you don't have to put the code in all the time. But uh, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, other thing too is oh my god, I can't say this enough. Is go to your go to your the, the Apple ID website. Uh, and review any information in there as far as your account. If something's been added, if it's a, if it's not hooked up, be secure with that because you know, a lot of people don't do that. And two-factor authentication by now you should have that enabled always. And, and yeah, it's a pain, but it's it's also a pain if someone gets into your account and hacks you. Um, so make sure that's it's a pain. On. But Apple's implementation is so much better than everyone else. Does. I agree. Uh, yeah, with the notification, with the notification on yeah. all the devices, yeah. put this code, the six-digit code in, 
uh, just so important to, to make sure that, uh, that you got that set up. Uh, they were, they did allow you to bypass that, bypass that in, in the past, but you can't anymore because if you set up a new Apple ID now, the nowadays it, it's automatic. You have to have, uh, they will not allow accounts that doesn't yeah. have it anymore. So, which is great. I mean, yeah. I think, I mean, a lot of people like that, but they, oh, well, um, <clears throat> Refuse the installed apps that's on your device. If there's any ones you don't recognize, get rid of them. I'm bad. I, I probably have like 250 or 300 apps on my iPhone. I probably use probably like 20 of them. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we're all like that. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're unsecure. But uh, you, you never know. There could be. I mean, if I remember in the past, there was a flashlight app that was was hidden as a, as a file storage uh, app that, that, yep. you can, that you could do. Yeah. So you, you just don't ever know. Um, and then... Uh, mobile device commit, uh, 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 management files or MDM, uh, the configuration profiles that are typically installed by employers or schools or any of that stuff. If you're no longer at the company or if uh, um, yeah, or you don't need access to it anymore, go into the uh, configuration profiles, remove them. Don't don't you know? Don't don't let those uh, be in there. Um, so we're, um, we're check for them. A lot of people get them installed and they don't want them and, there. Uh, that's right. I've seen that too. Yeah. Right. Um, so some com- some companies uh, require it, even though it's your device, but most don't. Um, if it's your device, it's your device. Uh, but if it's a company-owned device, yeah, they, they have every right to be doing that. So, um, but uh, but ch- check out this list. So we have a link in show notes to the to to the um, uh, to this uh, guide, the personal safety guide, and I thought that'll be a, a good decent review um, with uh, with that because it uh, definitely makes. Uh, uh, makes it for uh, something that's uh, really good to, to be able to be secure. So, yeah, a big one too is just sharing your passwords is really common nowadays, oh. for like Netflix and that kind of stuff. And don't share your Apple ID password because there's just so much no. more attached to that. I had a friend who wanted to watch Ted Lasso, and they're like, "Oh, give me your your iTunes password." I'm like, "No," oh. because they're gonna have access to way too much stuff, yeah. and that's just not. You yeah. don't want to share your Apple ID password; it's too personal. That's what that's what what family sharing's for for family. I mean, I do that with my family, and I have yeah, yeah. I have um, various family members that are part of my family family uh, sharing, and they're very happy because they get because I have the Apple One bundle, they can access to everything. So, but right, not but not my but not my, my not my data, and nor can I look at their data. Um, but they all yeah. have their Apple their own Apple ID. They have their own Apple ID that's linked clients. to it. Mm-hmm. I still have clients that share Apple IDs with each other, uh, spouses and kids, and that it's a mess. It's yeah. a mess. Yeah, don't do it. Because all that, you know, some of the things they want me to do is break it up, and it's not easy. So, yeah. well, the big one too with iCloud is your keychain. So, like, if you share your Apple ID password to someone, that person can then access all of your passwords for everything potentially. Uh-huh. If that's where you keep your passwords. That's a really terrible idea. It's uh-huh. really bad. Don't don't do that. It's a mess. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Anything else you guys want to add? We can go ahead and move on. No, not for security. All right. Well, we've got a little extra time here. Let's uh, let's, run, let's run through a few tips here. Um, first tip here I have is uh, uh, how to stop iMessage photos from uh, showing up in your Photos app. Um, this was an article actually, and I downloaded a blog. I thought this was interesting uh, to, to, to review. Uh, our pictures and videos you receive iMessage appearing automatically inside your iPhone photos app. That's because there is, that is a new feature that they added not too long ago called shared with you, uh, that was introduced in iOS 15. If you don't like this, um, you can actually stop it from automatically saving images received on iMessage, uh, uh, to the photos app. It is kind of a pain because, uh, if you don't like to have all the photos that are, that are sent to you, it might not be, they might be just photos that they just want to share with you and you see them, but do you really want them to add to your, uh, to your iPhone, your photos app? Uh, it might be for your, your, your spouse or, or a family member. You might want to do that, but do you really want to have all those photos that start <laughs> piling up in your photos app? I don't, I don't really think you do. Uh, it, uh, there's a good example. It shows, Go ahead. It shows, but it's not really in there. Just a little caveat on that. It shows in the Photos app, but it's not actually downloaded it because you have the option to add to your Photos library after that. That's true. Uh, that's true. But it, and it just shows shared with you. But if you don't, for some people, they just don't like that. They don't like that. And the podcast app does that too. Yeah. And the Apple yeah. TV app. Um and I said you could turn off. Uh, you can turn it off for entirely for all people in apps, or you can do it for only desired people, or you can do it for select apps. Uh, 
and so 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 you're able to go in there and actually make the change uh and uh it uh, it does does uh it does like that uh, because if you want to turn it off you go in and, and do that uh and uh, uh there there are a couple highlights he talks about here too is uh advantages and disadvantages um so the way to do this is you go into open into the settings app on either the iPhone or the iPad you scroll down and tap messages tap shared with you and then you have the choice of uh, turning off photos to prevent iMessage images from saving in the Photos app. So it does have a toggle to turn on and off. So you have control actually, which is nice in this setting. And I'll go and let me go the, through this setting again here. Go to settings, go to uh, tap mess, go to messages, and then tap shared with you. So then you can go through and uh, music, TV, Apple TV, Safari, photos, and, and podcasts. You can you have granular ways of turning all of them off or individually if you don't want those to be shared anymore. Uh, and then you actually can go into specific individuals. So if you have somebody's uh, uh, contact, you can, you can say show and share with you or not. So they do, so that might be a better option. Maybe there'll be some people you don't want to share and some people you do want to share. Uh, and uh, same thing occurs in Mac. So they talk about that a little bit as well. But uh, I think this is a, this is a, Good thing to know, but you also got to just be aware. Do you do you want to lose that? Do you, you guys? Do you guys leave this on? I mean, I have. I don't think I've ever turned this off or on. I think this is. Uh, I leave it on. Yeah, and there's some photos in there that I I do want to see and keep. So, um, you know, I left it on. I turned mine off. Um, you did. I have some friends who have, I will say, a crude sense of humor. <laughs> I don't want those photos showing up in uh in my photo library. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's that. I, there is that. You, you, you kind of have to, uh, kind of have to expect that someone's going to send some of those, uh, those jokes and all kinds of fun, crazy things here. Yeah. So parts of bodies and stuff like that. You know, you like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else with that? Do you guys want to move on here? Uh, uh, this was another interesting uh, thing to know about methods for printing messages from your iPhone. Uh, you you know when you want to be able to use uh, be able to print uh, messages from uh, iMessage. Uh, first method would be to do a screen capture. That can be a pain, but I mean, it's funny. I mean, I, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I do some watch some of those court court TV shows uh, that that I won't mention which one, but uh, and, and it's always interesting to see what all these printouts that people have of all the their iMessages that they've gotten, and you know their screenshots because it shows. You know, either a picture of a phone or, or it's got the, the pictures of the messages that do that. Um, so as we know how to do a screenshot, uh, you, you push the side button and the volume up button at the same time. And then it brings you into screenshot mode. So you can, you can actually sc- screenshot the message um, and uh, allows you to share it. And then you can use the share sheet to you know share it or, 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 or any way you want to do. Now there are other, there are other, uh, options too you can use there's the uh, there's a uh, um, program called any trans but also i think the most most common one is i'm is i amazing i think amazing is a great app that you can that's for your mac uh that you can install and actually be able to download um your messages and then be able to print them out because they're they're actually files so uh i i think that's a that's a cool thing i don't think you can actually uh, oh, no, actually, yeah, I think you can. If you wanted to, you know, actually wanted to print it, you just you can do select printer and, and print, and then you can print it. But I think you only can do that if you do a screenshot, that there is no direct way of printing iMessages if you needed to. Um, uh, you also could, you know, with a screenshot, t- turn it into a PDF if you wanted to and be able to uh, do, to do that. So do, do you find these guys this this uh, at all uh, handy if you needed to actually have a, a copy printout of a, a message? I haven't been sued before, so I haven't really had a reason oh, to, uh, I, to screenshot so. <laughs> my messages. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes it's useful for some people. I haven't found a, a use for it myself. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah, and it's not just iMessage. I have, you know, Facebook Messenger has the same problem where you have to screenshot every every page to to send it to somebody. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a pain in the butt too uh, to screenshot it. But yeah, sometimes you know. 
you know, you know how it is. You, you screenshot and then you got to make sure you, you get the next page with the last word, you know, off the page and the yeah. first word on the page. Yeah. It's not, there should be an easier way to do it. No, I agree. I agree. So, um, all right, let's uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up a little early here today. We, I think we went through a lot of stuff this week, and uh, we'll po- hopefully you found uh, uh, still, yeah. still uh, find that it's fine that was some good information. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, wrap things up for this week. Uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchwithios. Uh, we do have a new way to support the show. If you can, if you want to buy us a coffee, please buy us a coffee at going to buymeacoffee.com slash in touch with iOS. And you can uh, uh, kind of buy, buy us a coffee so we can support the show. We'd appreciate that. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe uh, so you're notified when we uh, live stream as well as uh, we put in new content on YouTube on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash DaveG65. We also can watch the... Uh, a live stream as well as all any past shows they're all out there um visit i in touch with ios magazine on flipboard where many of the topics we discuss are flipped onto this list it's, it's an actual magazine and has all the articles and, and information that we talk about for the show for every week go to check that out uh you also can uh, subscribe in your favorite podcatcher which includes apple podcasts and many others but better yet go to our website at in touch with ios.com where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Holden, the Pardo, thanks so much for being here. I'll let everybody know how, they can, let everybody know how they can find you. I'm uh, at Twitter at Holden DePardo. I'm also on the Apple Podcast um, Network. Um, you can catch me there as well. Great. We've got to listen. We have a link in the show notes for that. One, uh, let everybody know how they can find you. Um, yeah, uh, on this show, uh, uh, sometimes with Chuck on Tuesdays and uh, the Max of the Future uh, Facebook group. Um, it's basically where I spend most of my time. Um, um, it, Holden, always fun. Thanks yeah. for uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it, and uh, we all do. So thanks. Absolutely. And we thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll be back again, and we'll talk again soon. Mm-hmm.